This astronomy video will give us a little information about the local group of galaxies, the group of galaxies that our Milky Way is a part of. Uh, so we talk about galaxies and how they appear in the sky. One thing that we will notice is that galaxies are almost always found in a cluster, almost always in a cluster, very few isolated uh, with lots of empty space around them. Um, galaxies are found in clusters. In another video I'll talk more about galaxy collisions, but uh, the distances between galaxies relative to the size of the galaxy is much, much smaller than the comparison of the distance between stars divided by the size of a star. So there's, uh, we'll see much more of that in the universe of collisions of galaxies, but that's not the focus of this video. Uh, what keeps the galaxies next to each other in a, in a cluster? Well, that would be gravitation. And uh, a weak or poor cluster is uh, one that has less than about 50 galaxies. A rich cluster would have several hundred to even thousands of galaxies uh, gravitationally uh, linked to each other. Our, our local group is on the poor cluster side, and we'll, we'll get to that in uh, a few slides here. So here we have a portion of our local group. This is not the whole local group, but there are two sort of subclusters inside our local group. One of those subclusters is associated with the Milky Way galaxy. So the Milky Way galaxy dominates the gravitational uh, influence in this region of space. And we have the Milky Way galaxy, we have the large Magellanic Cloud, the small Magellanic Cloud, and some other smaller dwarf galaxies that are not uh, major at all. I'll talk about the masses of galaxies in a later slide. But that would be near the Milky Way. Now for the full local group, Milky Way is still at the center here. The other major component of the local group of galaxies is the Andromeda galaxy. And in fact, it's a little larger than the Milky Way galaxy. And then Triangulum galaxy that's somewhat nearer the Andromeda than it is the Milky Way. Um, <clears throat> this would be our local group. If you've noticed the scale up here, about a million light years across, about a million light years across, our Milky Way galaxy has a, a size of about 100,000 light years across. But now we're on a scale here of a million light years across, and we can see it's a few million light years out to the Andromeda galaxy. Um, so the count is still going on for the galaxies in our local group because there are some very small galaxies that are difficult for us to detect uh, through the gas and dust that's in our own galaxy and, and kind of blocks our view to a certain extent. But major characteristics of the local group, there are two large spiral type galaxies, the Milky Way and the Andromeda galaxy. There is a medium-sized spiral galaxy, that is Triangulum uh, M33, if I have my numbers correct. Um, and then there are a, a lot of dwarf galaxies, small ellipticals and irregulars and spherical galaxies. Um, and we're talking about 10 million light years across the span of the local group, roughly. There's no sharp edge to the local group, so this is just a, a rough scale that's uh, been provided here. Um, so look at Atlas of the Universe, do a Google search on that if you want some more of these diagrams. And then beyond our local group, our local group is part of the Virgo cluster, just on the edge of the Virgo cluster, maybe I should say. Uh, but we have the Virgo cluster here, a local group is back here, and there are various clusters of galaxies that have been identified. And again, you know, up to 100 in galaxies in each of these clusters. The Virgo cluster is much, much larger, but um, you get an idea here of how galaxies tend to be involved in clusters. Okay, super clusters, where we have clusters of clusters of galaxies, and I'm not going to go through all this, but we're starting to boggle the mind as to uh, all the numbers of galaxies and, of course, numbers of stars and planets that are, are represented in this slice. This is not the whole universe. This is just a uh, little larger scale. We're now at 100 million light years across for this distance bar on the top. but. Uh, 
again, trying to emphasize the fact that galaxies occur in clusters and small clusters of galaxies tend to be inside clusters of clusters. And so our, our notation here is a little confusing, but uh, the point is galaxies don't exist on their own, widely separated from other galaxies. They're in clusters, and those clusters of galaxies are in clusters. So back to our own cluster here and the Andromeda Galaxy. And I'll have to fix this picture, it looks like. Uh, so hang on. And we'll see if that stays visible now. But uh, the Andromeda Galaxy M31, M for the Messier catalog, that has a little over 100 objects in it. Um, as an astronomer was searching for comets, he continually found these little fuzzy patches on the sky and gave them M designations. They're not all galaxies, but uh, M31 is the Andromeda Galaxy. It's actually visible to your naked eye if you're in a dark uh, location and know where to look in the sky. I've got another video focused on the Andromeda Galaxy you could check out. It is larger than Milky Way Galaxy. How much larger, how much more massive is a little uh, under debate, a little uncertain. <clears throat> but certainly larger, certainly has more stars, certainly has more mass than uh, the Milky Way galaxy. Uh, the Hubble telescope has imaged towards the center of the Milky Way and found, uh, sorry, center of Andromeda, and has found that there are actually two concentrations of, uh, of stars towards the center of the Milky Way. Some people call this a double nucleus, but two black holes in, uh, in space there. And as far as the larger one, making measurements of the Doppler shift of stars as they move around this larger black hole indicates that the black hole here, the supermassive black hole, has a mass of 200 million stars, solar masses, 200 million solar masses inside that black hole. That's larger than the supermassive black hole at the center of the Milky Way galaxy. Um, also in this uh, diagram, you can see dust that's typical of spiral galaxies. It's a disk shape, and we're just seeing it kind of looks like a football due to our point of view. But if we could see edge on, we'd just see a thin line across uh, the sky here. Um, but it is a spiral galaxy with a disk. It has some satellite galaxies and many globular clusters as well. But the satellite galaxies, M32 is the one that's below, and then M110 is in the upper right here. So M31, <clears throat> it's a, a major, major galaxy. And uh, if I start to talk about some of the numbers here, so the Andromeda galaxy is perhaps 140,000 light years across compared to 100,000 for the Milky Way. And again, there's no sharp edge. So it's a little bit subjective on uh, where you put the, uh, the boundary and measure that 140,000 light year diameter. But perhaps 1,000 billion masses of the sun a thousand billion, a trillion times the mass of the sun is the mass involved with the Andromeda galaxy. That's to be compared with the Milky Way of about 800 billion solar masses. 800 billion solar masses. And there are more stars than that because the average or typical um, star's mass, I should say, is smaller than the mass of the sun. But about a thousand billion solar masses for Andromeda, about 800 billion solar masses for the Milky Way. Uh, triangulum that I mentioned, about 50 billion solar masses, and we'll uh, get to some of the others. But we fall off rapidly in size. Uh, these three really dominate. The Andromeda Galaxy, the Milky Way Galaxy, and Triangulum Galaxy really dominate the mass involved in the, the local group. Um, so we'll see if we can get back to uh, control here. Here's a sketch, an artist's view of the Milky Way galaxy. Oh, this is disappointing. Why don't I have a photograph of the Milky Way galaxy? I have photographs of these other things. Why don't I have a photograph of the Milky Way galaxy? We're inside the galaxy. There has never been a spacecraft out in this position where this artist's conception is. But we have a bar nucleus going across here. And if perhaps you can read this, my arrow is pointing out where the sun is located. Very roughly, we're halfway out from the center towards the edge of the Milky Way galaxy. You can see some of the spiral arms being identified here, the Perseus arm, uh, because as from the sun, if we look in the direction of the Perseus constellation, we'd see the Perseus arm of the Milky Way galaxy. The Sagittarius arm 
if we look from the sun in the direction of the constellation of Sagittarius, we would see the Sagittarius arm, uh, the Scutum Centaurus arm, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, I just make an observation here, a point for you. Um, so this is an artist's conception. Using infrared and radio telescopes, astronomers can gather information from material in our galaxy out in these various regions. With your eye, you are only seeing a very small sphere of stars around the sun. With our eyes, we cannot see, uh, or in the visible wavelengths, we really cannot see very far because gas and dust blocks our view of the total Milky Way galaxy. Uh, so infrared and radio astronomy, uh, microwave astronomy, can gather information from distant regions in our galaxy, but if you go outside and see the stars, you're only looking at stars that are very close to the sun. You're not seeing the whole Milky Way galaxy. You do see kind of the blur of light for the disk of the galaxy, uh, the Milky Way galaxy, the Milky Way band across the sky. So let's go on a little further here. So the Triangulum Galaxy, and I chose just to pick up an infrared view of this uh, galaxy, showing you the location of dust, uh, mainly in the, uh, in the galaxy. Uh, from the Spitzer Space Telescope, but it is again a spiral galaxy. This dust kind of forms spiral bands going around here. And again, a, um, about 15 times less mass in this galaxy compared to the Milky Way galaxy. Just a, um, a rough number. M32, one of the companions of Andromeda, a dwarf elliptical type galaxy, so not a spiral, but more elliptical with more smooth structure for brightness. And then M110, another dwarf elliptical. The uh, masses in here, the M32, this would be about 3 billion times the mass of the sun, about 3 billion. That's compared to the Milky Way being 800 billion. So we're down by a factor of 30, roughly. Uh, 30 times less mass in this galaxy compared to the Milky Way. And similar here for the M110, a few more um, objects in here, about 100 times less mass than the Milky Way galaxy, but another elliptical kind of smooth brightness, no evidence of spiral structure. And then the large and small Magellanic clouds. So this photograph was taken from the southern hemisphere and uh, probably Chile. Um, the band of the Milky Way is here in the sky. From the northern hemisphere, we cannot see the small Magellanic cloud and the large Magellanic cloud in the sky. They're always below my horizon. But if you would travel to the uh, southern hemisphere, you'd be able to see these objects, uh, prominent objects in the sky. Uh, but large and small Magellanic clouds, these are gravitationally being affected by the Milky Way galaxy and being absorbed by the Milky Way galaxy. So here we have uh, the large Magellanic Cloud, the small Magellanic Cloud. They're irregular type galaxies. We don't see spiral arm structure in them, but they are forming stars. Um, so you can see the color in here. These would be where there are hot stars in the, in the small Magellanic Cloud that are heating up uh, areas around them, and then that hydrogen gas uh, primarily emits red visible light. Um, so sixth largest uh, object in the local group. The small Magellanic Cloud uh, has about six billion times the mass of the Sun uh, for its mass. The large Magellanic Cloud about 10 billion. And then here's a globular cluster that these distances are not the same so it's a little misleading to compare those objects so I won't. But the large Magellanic Cloud and various nebula have been identified inside it. That's what these markings are, are telling us. And again, star-forming regions are found in here, but it's an irregular shape. It does not have a spiral structure. Um, and again, about um, 10 billion times the mass of the sun in that structure. Large Magellanic Cloud and the small Magellanic Cloud, there are streams of material that are being picked up, gravitationally affected by the Milky Way galaxy. Um, and also as the small Magellanic Cloud and the large Magellanic Cloud move through the outer regions of the Milky Way galaxy, they encounter um, gases associated with our galaxy uh, that have not been formed into stars. And those collisions kind of strip out um, gas from the uh, 
um, the large and small Magellanic Cloud and the gravitational pull of the Milky Way galaxy is distorting uh, those two clouds as well. Then in the uh, Large Magellanic Cloud, 1987, there was a supernova that occurred. So at this position in the cloud, and you're seeing uh, light move out from the region of that star that exploded and making some nice uh, uh, colorful uh, rings around that supernova explosion. It was a very important supernova because astronomers had equipment to detect neutrinos that came from uh, this supernova. And by studying the light and studying those neutrinos, uh, there, our knowledge of the way that stars explode in supernova uh, was, it was advanced. This is about 168,000 light years from the sun as to where this uh, uh, supernova did occur. Um, we have light echoing off of uh, material around the star. We also have physical material itself moving out from uh, the supernova explosion and then running into material that was released by this big star before the supernova occurred. Uh, so interesting the way the shock wave lights up uh, the material here, gives it energy to glow. Um, nice, nice photo. Uh, some other smaller members of the local group, Barnard's Galaxy as a new galactic catalog number. Um, another dwarf galaxy, the irregular. There is stars. There are stars that are being formed in this irregular galaxy. Uh, Sexton's B galaxy, and you start to see these smaller galaxies are less distinguishable. Um, you just got a higher concentration of stars than you do have on other places of the of space. But uh, uh, Sexton's B, Sexton's is a constellation. A uh, wolf landmark Malat galaxy um, discovered by these astronomers. And again, a little bit of star formation going on where you see these red, uh, red objects. So um, many of the uh, smaller members of the uh, local group are irregular and dwarf type galaxies, spherical galaxies um, that are small and uh, still being cataloged. It's you know, quite possible that the count of galaxies will, uh, will increase. There's also hot gas that's been identified, hot, because it gives off x-rays. So we have the Milky Way uh, uh, drawn into here, and we have large Magellanic Cloud and small Magellanic Cloud, and this hot gas, it's not perfectly spherical, but that's uh, so far what's been detected. And this is uh, uh, material that is at high temperature, uh, enough to give off x-rays. The mass is quite amazing. Um, our local group in this hot gas, it contains enough mass to make another Milky Way galaxy, you know, one of the major components of the, uh, of the local group. So in terms of thinking about the major components of the local group, Andromeda carries the most mass. This hot gas cloud and the Milky Way galaxy would be next, and then the Triangulum galaxy, and then you work your way into smaller objects. Our members of the local group, if you want to look at a list, I'm not going to list them all, uh, go to wikipedia.org. It's not a real scientific uh, place, but it is uh, a convenient place to look and see uh, um, a listing of the local group. Once you get to Wikipedia, search for local group. There'll be the, a few entries that come up. Click on the one that has a picture of galaxies and uh, has the attachment local group of galaxies. Down there list, I counted 58. Uh, probable members for the local group. And then if you want some more uh, diagrams about the local group, atlasoftheuniverse.com slash localgr.html. And you could uh, get some other information there about the local group of galaxies and artists uh, sketching of that. So again, just a reminder where we have been here, the local group, uh, over 50 uh, member galaxies really three prominent ones, the Andromeda, the Milky Way Galaxy, and Triangulum, um, the Triangulum being the medium-sized uh, spiral galaxy, and then just lots of dwarf, elliptical, and irregular and spherical galaxies to uh, kind of complete that list. So there we are for uh, information. If you want to get some more astronomy and physics videos, uh, uh, go to physics.gpclements.com, astronomy.gpclements.com. Um, these sites are free. You know, 
there's nothing to buy at these sites. They have lists of my YouTube videos. When you watch the YouTube videos, if you enjoy them and want to uh, keep updated on what I post in the future, this subscribe means just click the subscribe button in YouTube. You don't pay any money, but just click the subscribe button in YouTube. I'd appreciate that. So hope you're watching the sky and learning about astronomy.